Hi, my name is Dale Purvis. For nearly 40 years now, I've been doing research in neuroscience. My particular interest in the last 10 of those years is how our sensory systems make sense of the information they take in from the outside world. Particularly, why our visual systems make us see what we do. Which one looks the widest? See in these demonstrations, there are some pretty obvious discrepancies between what we perceive this red line appears longer. And the world as it really is. That is the world we measure with physical instruments like rulers, protractors, or photometers. Take a look at this pedestal here and consider the appearance of these two regions of the pedestal. This area looks much lighter than this area. But when we apply a mask, you can see that these two areas are actually being generated by the same gray patches. We can confirm with a photometer that these two patches return exactly the same amount of light to the eye. Even stranger is the apparent lightness of these two surfaces produced just by this funny edge, this one looking darker than this one. The effect disappears when we mask out the edge. We will then take a look at some of the strange ways we perceive color, motion, and form. Hue, the perception of relative redness, blueness, greenness, or yellowness of a stimulus. Saturation, the degree to which the perception approaches a neutral gray. And color, lightness, and darkness, the sense of the overall intensity of a light stimulus. Consider this rod or line moving from left to right that we've seen before. When seen through this opening, the rod seems to be moving downward and to the right. But seeing it through this vertical slit, the same rod seems to be traveling straight down. Again, it is the context that determines the motion that is perceived, not the physical reality of the motion in the world or on the retinal image. There are many real-world instances that indicate the strange ways we see motion. Lest you think again that these demonstrations are simply lab stuff, we routinely see moving objects through openings of all sorts because objects in the foreground block the view of objects in the background. Again, the visual system is somehow getting around the fact that the image sequences on the retina cannot specify the actual movements of objects in the world. Next, let's consider the perception of form. In the simplest case, perception of form involves geometric characteristics such as the length of lines, their apparent orientation, and the angles they make with other lines. But if brain activity is not directly representing the real world in terms of image features, what then is it doing? The evidence, based on what we actually see, suggests that our visual systems have evolved on the basis of the trial and error successes or failures of the behavior of our ancestors as they interacted with a physical world that is directly unknowable. Minor variations in visual circuitry that linked retinal images a little bit better with successful visually guided behavior increased in prevalence over evolutionary time because the improved behavior increased the reproductive success of these more fit individuals. Using a device called a laser range scanner which is commonly used to assess the three-dimensional structure of buildings, it's possible to statistically relate the 3D structure to the corresponding two-dimensional structure of the same laser scan scenes. By determining this relationship over and over in a large number of natural scenes, it's relatively easy to build up a database of millions of samples of how lengths of lines in the world relate to lengths of lines in the retinal images. But this seems to be what we actually see is trying to tell us about how our brains work, how we make sense of sensory perceptions.